What is here at the Concord Museum are a collection of stories. You know, stories about the founding of America, stories about the people who lived here who happened to be famous, artifacts that bring to life various periods of time so that for people all over the country, they can come here. They're not just seeing Concord's history, they're seeing the birth of this country in many ways. It's just extraordinary to think that in this small town, you have the birth of the American Revolution with the shot heard around the world at the North Bridge. You've got the beginnings of the Transcendental Movement. You've got the anti-slavery abolitionist movement. And then all these writers and people from history here at the same time. And then you have a community of people who somehow transmitted their passion for preserving this history to the next generation. The campaign is important not just for people who live in Concord, but for people in America and perhaps even the world who want to understand about the history of this country and what it means as a beacon of hope to the world at large. And it's where the revolution began. So that's not just Concord's history, that's everybody in this country's history. And the more you can feel connected to that, the more you're going to remember what it is that made America special. There's nothing that allows you to bring yourself back in time than actually seeing the desk where Thoreau wrote. And you see that key that allowed him to lock it in the, in the nighttime so that nobody could see what it was that he was writing. Or you see the lock on the jail when he went to jail for having protested against the Mexican-American War. And you see the table where Emerson actually worked. I think it allows you to imagine them alive again. They're coming down at the beginning of a day, they're sitting at a desk, they're writing, they're walking around the house. Those kinds of things tell stories. And I think when a student sees an actual item, like the lantern, the Paul Revere lantern, there's a sense of imagining what it was like then. And they can almost touch it, they can feel it. And it's, it's better than just sometimes reading about something because there's a visceral sense of it being right there. So that collection of artifacts and having students see them, and they can interpret them on their own. I mean, for a democracy, it's so important that people understand where our free institutions came from. How did it happen that America was founded as the only place in the world on an idea, not just on a place of land? So telling the stories about the birth of the revolution, telling the literary stories of the people who talked about it as they were growing older, allows you to learn from their mistakes and their triumphs. And it keeps that free sense of America alive in that next generation. I think if people support the museum, they're going to feel a part of transferring knowledge from one generation to the next. And you're really leaving something to your children and their children's children by doing this. And you'll know that it's permanent. You'll know that you're creating an institution that's going to last for a long time, in addition to the institution. It's been here a long time. And that it'll expand the opportunities for young people to learn about America expand civic engagement, all of those things which will make you feel good, I think, as a part of a collective enterprise to, to preserve and protect history. It just feels like such a fortunate connection to be in a place that preserves its history so well and to be able to help, if I can, um, have the museum expand, bring more students here, open up spaces, have more people come here to learn about not just the history of this town, but the history of our country. And so I'm proud to be part of it.